Hi everybody, welcome to the seventh module of early childhood care and education. The seventh module will deal with the theoretical foundations and its implication towards early learning and development with particular reference to ecological and sociocultural perspective. After understanding some of the major theories of child development that has got direct implications towards learning and development of young children, recent theories that states the importance of society and culture becomes imperative. The two major theories that come under these roof are ecological systems theory and sociocultural theory. Anyhow, the first video chunk of the seventh module would only deal with ecological systems theory as proposed by Yuri Brofenbrenner. This theory is not a stage theory. It gains significance in explaining how the child himself in terms of his body and mind and his environment that concerns with the immediate and far off surrounding affect his growth and development. He also tried to explain how alteration at one level has got a ripple effect on all the systems of the child. So, at the end of this video, you will be able to comprehend the levels of the ecosystem a child is enmeshed into, analyze the interaction between the levels and in between the levels of the ecosystem, identify the educational implications of ecological systems theory in an early classroom setting. Yuri Brofenbrenner, an American psychologist, had opened a new sphere of child development and his ecological approach to understand children over the past decade. His approach was recently named as Bioecological Systems Theory and is also called by various other names like Development in Context Theory, Human Ecology Theory or Ecological Systems Framework. What is the basic assumption of this theory? Any child born in this world gets enmeshed within a system framework called as the ecosystem that starts from the less complex, most intimate home environment to the more complex, broadest, far off the system called the society or culture. To understand this assumption, consider the following two situations. The first situation is where a child named Robin is born to a stable, middle class, happily married, employed parents and was taken care of by a patient caretaker from six months during the daytime. Every evening and all weekends, Robin's parents spend quality time with their son. By three to four years, Robin was found to be more adaptable in a preschool setting and happily socializing with his peer group. A look into the situation too. A child named Giri is born to unhappily married middle class parents employed but ever fighting. When Giri was six months, his mother took up the whole responsibility of her child after getting divorced. The mother faced several hurdles to meet out the ends Giri was put in a less supervised daycare center from then on. The mother was not able to spend quality time with Giri as she is already overwhelmed by her problems. By three to four years, Giri found it difficult to socialize with his peer group or even adapt to the preschool environment. Why is it so? The answer is that the ecosystem of Robin had better and positive interactions, whereas Giri had fewer but not so positive interactions. With this, Yuri Brofenbrenner proposed the ecological model with a belief that the growth and development of a child depend on the nature of the inherent qualities of a child as well as his environment and the extent to which they interact with each other. Brofenbrenner categorizes the whole environment of a child into four nested structures within which and even beyond a child happens to spend his everyday life. 
These four structures are microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem and macrosystem. Let us understand each system and its interaction in detail. The first, the microsystem. This is the innermost, smallest and immediate environment of a child. This system deals with two aspects. The first one is a child himself, what we call it as body. And the second is about the immediate intimate environment that the child belongs to. Now what is body here? Body as you know is a life support system and the mobility system through which an individual perceives and interacts with the environment. The whole of the body of a child has three subsystems namely biological system which comprises of the genetic makeup and general health status of a child, cognitive system that involves the process of the brain in gathering and interpreting information and the third system is the emotional system wherein the temperament and attachment levels in determining the degree of exhibiting and responding to emotions is dealt with. And now what is immediate environment? The most intimate environment of a child namely the family, daycare center and the spirituality has got a direct impact on the child's well-being. The family is the closest, intense, durable and influential part of the whole ecosystem. The family influences every domain of development with its needed input and related behavior feedback. The second, the school or the daycare center is the first place a child develops a relationship with others outside their immediate family. These relationships help a child in all of the three internal systems. Third, the most important is spirituality. It is said to be the storehouse of moral and ethical values irrespective of the family's preference and heritage. These values, though cannot be embedded in the minds of young children, a strong foundation is to be laid. Brenner emphasizes that all interactions at this level are bidirectional and reciprocal. In other words, the immediate environment providing the input into the child's brain influences a child's behavior in terms of biological, cognitive and emotional systems and in turn the child's behavior affect the behavior of the adults in the immediate environment. The second system is the mesosystem. The interactions between the three major microsystems namely family, school and spirituality is referred to as the mesosystem. These interactions might be the linkages established between the family and peer group and between the family and the related spiritual center. These linkages in turn were found to have an impact on the individual though not direct. For example, when the child's friends are being invited to his birthday party, the harmony and like-mindedness influences development positively. At the same time, suppose if a parent is found to criticize one of the child's friends for most of the time, then the child would experience conflicting emotions that influences development negatively. The third system is exosystem. The people and places that the child does not have direct contact but still do influence the child's development are referred to as exosystem. The exosystem normally involves the workplace of the parents, neighborhood or community and the extended family of the child. Within the exosystem, though the child does not have an active role, an interaction of ecosystem with that of the other two inner levels of ecological models do have a significant impact on the development of a child. For example, if a child's parent loses his job and unable to look into the basic needs of the family, the child gets affected negatively. On the other hand, if a parent gets promoted with a pay hike and can meet all the physical needs of the child, the child gets a positive influence. The fourth system is a macro system. Macro system describes the cultural context of the individual. Hence, it is considered to be the largest and remote group of people and places of a child 
that influences the life of a child significantly. It involves the cultural patterns and values, political and economic system. For example, a child born in a poor family, facing the hardship in making the ends meet, has got a different kind of development when compared to the child born in a middle class or upper class family. Now after understanding the ecological model and how the society or the culture plays an important role on a person's mind and development, you the facilitator should know about the educational implications. Brofenbrenner's implication towards child development in early years gained significance in the belief that a child's immediate environment and the interaction within it as well as among the larger environment influence a child's overall development. The conflict in any one layer ripples throughout the other layers. The school environment that occupies the first layer of Brofenbrenner model, that's a microsystem, should work for the key objective that the primary relationship must be intended to last a lifetime. Any child born in this world should have an ongoing, long-term mutual interaction with an adult or any adults for that matter, using a strong mutual tie lasting for a lifetime. This mutual tie could be established through unconditional love and support. Though the home is a primary place for providing this type of support, the school environment should try to foster it by three major means. The first one is that the teachers need to work to support the primary adult-child relationship. The schools should create an environment that welcomes and nurtures families. The third mean is that Education should foster societal attitudes, moral thinking, boost their self-confidence and self-esteem and enhance logical thinking. Hence, the ecological system theory had offered a framework of how the development of a child gets affected by the social relationship and the world around him. Moreover, this theory helps you to understand the reason why we behave differently in the presence of our family members as compared to our behavior in the school or the workplace. Thank you. Hope to meet you in the second chunk of the video. Thank you.